greetings. In addition to Bruce Lipton coming to our local village this month, in April we're having a TED talk. I haven't been invited, and I'm not sure I'd go even if I was, but the other night when I was lying awake, up came a TED talk, things to talk about. So I'm going to take a look to see if any of that comes back now. So what I imagined with the TED Talk was standing on the stage and feeling love for everyone, feeling an atmosphere of love where we're all together. And what I looked at is how can we create that together? How can we come together now? How can we be more of a one than separate little people sitting there listening to somebody on the stage? So what came was to say, and you could do this now if we send this out, is to say, take a breath and just relax a bit and feel yourself here. And if we can, just imagine, instead of us all sitting separately, wherever we're listening to this, we're actually part of one energy. Just by being together in this way, it's one energy. So then I looked at, so how can we enhance that, being one energy? And one thing that came with, by just not trying, just sitting here, not trying to get something, understand something, agree or disagree, letting all of that go as though we're listening to the birds sing or the wind in the trees where we don't have to do anything. Because what I've been coming to see more and more clearly is beyond our uh, program behavior, behind the part that's trying to be or not to be something, even beyond the part that who we are as a unique individual, behind that is this oneness, this togetherness, this unseparateness. So what I was looking at is, let's see if we can be together that way now. Just listening and feeling and being one with everything. And then whatever comes through might just slip past all that part that tries and has to know and approval and disapproval. It might slip in and just open up to ourselves the part that's there all the time. The Bible has a very nice word for it that I like. It's called quickened. Something it says and it quickens something inside. Or we could say reminds. Or yeah, we realize, we remember something that's there all the time but we're so busy being on the outside and performing and doing and not doing that we don't drop back into that space that's always there. To help this situation that I'm talking about, this softness, this gentleness, this openness, the oneness, what I suggest to you is don't put any emphasis on the person that's talking to you now or even what he's saying. Disconnect. Yes, he's there. Yes, he's saying something. And if you don't agree or disagree or try to understand, it may just pop inside and you go, oh, I know that. And that's one of the things that happened to me. Just briefly, 
ever since I can remember, I've been curious. I was always in trouble for being curious. I kept asking questions. The teacher would say that, and I'd say, well, how do we know that? Or oh. So I've always been curious. So I've been curious about everything. And especially curious about people. And in order to be curious about people, I had to be curious about this one here that was being curious. So I started to investigate, and my whole life has become about investigating what's things about, and trying not to have a position or an attitude. Because what I found is when we have a position or an attitude, we go to a part of the mind that has been programmed in the past by people who may not have the whole picture. So what they have told me may not be the whole picture. In fact, practically everything I learnt at school, which was a very long time ago, is now outdated, especially in science. You can watch the science magazine week by week, and there's a headline that says, now we have to rethink. And that's probably the trouble, you see. We think. Most of the breakthroughs came through, didn't come through thinking. They just popped in or came in while they were dreaming. So I was looking and having realizations. I've been around the world several times. I've been to gurus and, and shamans and witch doctors and all sorts of people. And listening, what were they seeing that I hadn't yet realized? And just not going where they might not be clear, but where are they clear? And slowly things seem to open up inside and go, oh yes, I know that. My knowing was usually slightly different from their knowing, meaning their realisation was, let's say, coloured by their uniqueness. And the realisation here was coloured by the real by the uniquenesses here. But what I was looking for was, how can we get rid of the colour? How can we look so clearly that we go past our attitudes and what we think we know and we don't know? Can we slip through there? So it does seem as though there are many things beyond what we've been told. In fact, it almost seems as though there's a conspiracy, not only not to tell us things, but to tell us things that aren't true, to restrict how we experience reality. So I have had experiences that really do look like extraterrestrials and other dimensions. And psychics tell me things that, as they told me, I knew it. And I, as they told me, I knew that I'd known it, but I didn't know it until they said it. So what I came to see is, yes, we have a reality. What we see, what we hear, what we touch, what we taste, what we smell, our senses. Yes, we do have that. And there is something beyond. And as I started to disconnect with trying to be safe, secure and predictable and know things, as I started to let these things go, I started to have other, and then there isn't really a word, it's not experience, it's not knowing, it's just a sense of something else that's beyond the senses. As these things opened up inside, I started to realise I know exactly what Jesus is saying. I know what he's saying. I was in the church choir, so I went to church two or three times on Sunday. I heard the words of Jesus over and over and over. I love the words of Jesus. I love the feeling of Jesus. I love the love of Jesus, even although not the doctrine and the Christianity. I was sort of in love with Jesus. I just felt touched when I said that. And then I touched the microphone. <laughs> so, and, and I 
loved his words. But as this realization happened, I got it. I know what he means. I know exactly what he means. And what he says is exactly what Buddha said and Lao Tzu said. And all the awakened, what we call the awakened people, the wise people. I know what he's saying. It's not just a knowing, it's a right click. That's it. So when Jesus says, take no thought of tomorrow, let tomorrow take thought of itself. I know what that means. It's be here now. And be here now, not to be here now, but because there isn't anything else. There is only now. And I'm talking about this now, with you listening to this now. There is only now. But you say all these things have in the past. But first of all, what you remember isn't accurate. It's what your mind's decided to remember. But in any case, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, but what about the future? If, but there isn't a future, you see. That's all in your mind. No mind, no past, no future. Jesus said, unless you leave your father, your mother, your sisters, your brethren, your wives and your children, you will not enter into the kingdom. Where is the kingdom? He said the kingdom of God is within. But he also said, when you see the in as the out, and the out as the in, the up as the down and the down as the up, when you see a man as a woman and a woman as a man, then will an eye be single, and that body will be full of light, enlightened. You'll suddenly realize this is it. So these things started to unfold. It's easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than a rich person to enter into the kingdom. That's right. If you know anything, it's in the way. It's not knowing. The sense says, not knowing is the most intimate. What's being said now, you don't need to know this. If you do know it, you're stuck. You're suddenly stuck. Oh, I know that. But now you're stuck in the mind, knowing it. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let the next moment be born in this moment. When you become as a little child. Fresh, unknowing, in this moment. If you haven't already, have a look at these new babies that are being born. They come from another level. They're present. Instead of the old day when the baby would just sit there sucking its thumb, they look at you now and they're there. And if you look at them, they respond, usually with a smile. They're present. When you become as a little child, and what's a little child? Here, now, not knowing. It doesn't need to know anything. It's, it doesn't even play. It just is. It's, we could say experimenting, but it isn't even experiments. It's having this experience in this very moment, just as it is. So then I came to, well, how can we share this? And of course, we go to Lao Tzu that says, the truth cannot be said, and if it's said, it's not the truth. But you see, if that's true, then it's not true. Because the truth cannot be said. But my experience is it can be heard. You can hear it because it's already there. So it's not actually coming from the outside. The outside is like a frequency that stimulates what's already in there. You already know this. Thou art that. The kingdom of God is within. It's just it's got buried. It's got covered over by things that people have told us, by religion and, and spirituality and politics and teachers and parents who don't know. In fact, 
what's the point of listening to somebody who's miserable? All they're teaching is misery. If you're going to listen to anybody, listen to people who are grateful, not complaining. Who are people who are talking about what is, not what isn't. So I came to, how can I share? And in order to share, I went to the mind to see what I know. And I found, I don't know anything. So up come the dilemma. How come I don't know anything, and yet there's this incredible sense of something. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know where these words are coming from. To talk to you, I hear them at the same time as you do. Or maybe a fraction earlier, I get a package of something. And then the mind unwraps it, and it looks around for the nearest word that might connect with you. In the past, I used to go, how can I share to everybody? And over the years I've realised the finer things can only be shared with people who are ready for finer things. What's ready? Taking no thought of tomorrow. Not being attached to the past. Not focusing on life and being safe and secure and predictable. But ready to live this moment unconditionally. Just as Krishnamurti said. Unconditional awareness. Here now, ready for anything. Whatever it is, we're here and now, and we're ready for it. Now, not what you're going to do in the future. Because the mind often goes, oh yes, that's what I'm going to do. No, you're not going to do anything. You can't go in to do anything, because the future never happens. There is no future. There is only now. And this is it. This is it. So when I looked at sharing, what can I share? What it came to, or what I sensed, and what the psychics have, have confirmed is the main thing you share is the frequency of the vibration of the level of consciousness that you are in that moment. That's what's shared. The words of the carrier wave. And they're interpreted, if you go through the mind, they are interpreted by the mind. Let's divert for a moment and I'll see if I can remember to get back. You see, you're not hearing me now. We could say you're hearing the speaker, but it's not even that. You see, no sound travels from here to the microphone. What happens is there is a, uh, a desire a um, motivation to share something. It vibrates here. No sound. It vibrates. The frequencies go out and they touch the microphone. But in your case it's touching you. What does it touch? It touches the hairs in the ears. That's all. Vibrations. The hairs go to a drum. The drum changes it to a frequency that goes to a part of the brain that changes the frequency into the sound. Another part of the brain changes the sound into words. Another part of the brain changes the words into meaning. But whose meaning? It has to be yours. Because the only place you've got is to connect with your meaning. And that's not what's being shared. So don't look for meaning. Don't look to understand. Just listen. So I came to this place, but how can I share if I don't understand? And then I remembered one of my favourite sages, Lao Tzu. Everyone seems so certain, and I walk as though upon thin Here, now, not knowing, no certainty, no safety, no security, no predictability, just here, now, as Krishnamurti says, unconditional awareness, here, now, and open. Maybe, as science is now telling us, is we are creating.
meeting what we call the outside by what we've programmed on the inside. And if we let that go, we may start to find something else is happening. Here, now. If you feel yourself, you might find that there's a vibration in there, a tingling, a humming, or something. You may even hear it in the ears. And if you allow it in the body, just allow it, it'll probably get stronger. And you'll start to feel it, first of all, in the fingers, and then all over the skin, a tingling. And then you may find that the tingling doesn't actually finish at the skin. You suddenly see the air is tingling. It's a vibration. And there's no separation. As you move your hand, the tingling actually goes through the hand. It passes through. It's as though the hand is transparent. And on one level, it is. We're transparent. We are actually a consciousness in a physical body. But even the physical body can be transparent. And then the air is vibrating. And the tree person. And they may be standing there talking away their story or complaining or this and that and they don't realise they're not that behaviour. They're not that personality. They're not that neur neurosis. They're this frequency. They're this vibration. no separation. The separation is a game we've devised. It's a wonderful game. We've devised this game so that I can see you. There isn't an I and a you. But what we've done is we separated it. And we separated the up and the down and the in and the out. And love and hate and good and bad. And possible and impossible. We've divided them to get a perspective on it. It's a game. And is even the scientist Bruce Lipton saying, it's a game. There's something else. And we have come here to play this game to get these different perspectives. Can you, so can you see? Don't take it seriously. Thou art that. Not this. That. Everything. That's who you are. And you've taken this identity, this machine, this robot, just to be in, to have experiences. If you're not physical, you can't have physical experiences. So you came here to have this game and to evolve in this game. If you orientate your life as a complaint, that's very stupid. Because as you will realise, it was your idea to come here in the first place. And not only that, again, as Bruce Lipton is saying, not only that, but you almost certainly chose your circumstances. You chose your parents. You chose the country. You chose everything to give you the orientation of the experience you need in order to evolve. So to complain is ridiculous. To complain about your parents is so stupid. You will never repay what your parents have done for you, what they've sacrificed, what they've gone through. Especially your mother. She was the vehicle for you to be here. 
for this life, for this experience. So to complain, contraction, lowers your frequency and draws things towards you to match that frequency. So when you complain, you draw towards you circumstances, events about which you can complain. Samsara, the wheel that keeps going around and round. Yes, there may be things that are uncomfortable, there may be things in your life that you prefer not to be there. And what else is there? This fantastic planet we're on. Incredible planet. And all that goes on. And all the experiences that are happening. And I know it's an old story, but wherever you are, whoever you are, there's somebody in a lot more pain than you are. Disconnect from these old ideas. Especially the things that have been given to you by religion. They're poison. Until death us depart. Forget it. We're not here just to be with one person. We're here to be with everybody. Everybody. To move respond in each moment not knowing just responding 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 so take a look at your life and disconnect from your complaints and take a look this state, and I have no idea if there are other and other and other states, but as you wake up to this state, what you'll see is nothing is more or less important than anything else, because there is only this moment.